and welcome wherever you are. I'm Melvin Wood, the Minister of Blowart Hill Church and Interim Moderator of St Columba Gaelic Church, Glasgow, Scotland. It's good to have you with us as you join us for our worship today. As well as being the Sunday service for members and friends of Blowart Hill Church, this is also the English language service for our friends at St Columba. And they also have a new Gaelic service today on the YouTube Gaelic Church channel, Uglish Gaelic Adloina. Today it's conducted by Robert Dunbar, Professor of Celtic and Scottish Studies at the University of Edinburgh. But thank you for joining us on this channel today. Your presence is very welcome. And if you enjoy this service, please click like and subscribe to the channel so that it's easier for you to find us in the future. The Spirit of God affirms to our spirit that we are God's children. He comes to the aid of our weakness. Almighty God, without you we are not able to please you. Mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may direct and rule our hearts at all times and in all things. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. So let us draw near to the God who loves us and cares for us always. Let us worship God. Our first hymn is I Am Trusting Thee, Lord Jesus. The tune is St Helen's. Let's draw together with God in prayer. Let us pray. Holy God, beneath the uproar of the shouting world, enable us to hear your still small voice of calm. Help us to shake free of the clamorous voices and to choose you before all else, above all else, ahead of all else. Help us to rest our weariness in the divine love which created the universe, and to lift up our hearts towards that supreme beauty before whom saints and angels fall down in wonder. Forgive our sins, receive our devotions, and grant us your Spirit to bring us together in love and praise from our different homes into your one great Church, the Church of Jesus Christ, whose name we honour and in whose name we offer this and all our prayers. Amen. Now, let us hear God's word. First from the book of Micah in the Old Testament, and then from St Paul's letter to the Philippians. 
I'm delighted to say that our reader today is Jill Clark. Jill has been connected with Blowart Hill Church all her life. And I'd like to explain that Jill has a condition called cerebral palsy. Most of you will have heard of that, but it's a condition that affects some more than others. And one effect of cerebral palsy for Jill is that she needs to use a computerised talker to speak. So she's going to be using that today. I think we're all bowled over by how much Jill manages to pack into her life. She swims with dolphins, she skis, she goes horse riding, and she's an active member of our church at Lord Hill. Today, she's part of this online service. So it's over to you, Jill. God, chapter 6, verses 6 to 8. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the food of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O oh, mortal, what is good and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. Amen. Thanks be to God. Philippians chapter 2 verses 1 to 11. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself. Taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also finally acknowledged him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Thanks be to God.
I'm taking my text today from the book of Micah, chapter 6, verse 8. What does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God? May it be in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Justice. Everybody seems to be after it these days. The world seems to have gone all out for justice. The origin of this was the killing of George Floyd in a brutal arrest by a Manhattan cop. Immediately condemned as racist, his death sparked wor worldwide protest, first in the USA and then all over the world. And after that, people started to look at the root causes of racism and they started to protest, mostly peacefully, focusing on the injustices of the slavery of the African people, most of whom landed up in the Caribbean or in present day USA. And after that, things for me started to get a bit fuzzy around the edges. Activists here in Glasgow, for example, started agitating about an issue that Glaswegians have known about for decades, namely that some of our principal city streets are named after the old tobacco lords who brought prosperity to Glasgow but were slave owners as well. Nobody ever pretended that was a good thing, it was just part of our history. But when one protester put up a makeshift sign on Buchanan Street, renaming it George Floyd Street, I wanted to start asking questions. I found out that while George Floyd's killing was certainly unjust, criminal and caused by institutionalised racism, George Floyd himself was no angel. His long criminal record included holding a knife to the stomach of a pregnant woman, and when he was arrested in Manhattan, he was high on drugs. Renaming our principal downtown shopping street for a man who uh, was a, a slave trader, even though he helped to make Glasgow rich, and taking that from him and naming it instead for an iconic victim of racism, even though he was a low-life, violent drug dealer with many prison terms to his name, doesn't seem like a fair exchange to me. Twenty years ago, in Glasgow, we took Royal Exchange Square and renamed it Nelson Mandela Place. And that was fine and that was supported by many, but George Floyd was no Nelson Mandela. So, getting back to the principle of justice that I began by talking about, that doesn't seem just to me. Above all, it doesn't seem fair for the many black people who suffer prejudice each and every day, yet lead law-abiding lives. And when the focus then began to shift to statues, I, I'm sorry guys, but you really started to lose me. Okay, some of those fellows were slave traders, some of those fellows were racists. But when peaceful demonstrations are hijacked by extremists and statues begin to topple, I'm afraid that's a bit too much for me. All right, Let's take a step back. Let's take a breath. Let's look at each and every statue and make a calm, sane judgment on what their place might be in our 21st century streets and squares. Let's look at every last one, from Winston Churchill to Greyfriars Bobby, from Henry Dundas to Desperate Dan. But let's do it like civilised people who can show the human race has come on a bit since those days of the slave ships. Let's do it in a way that reflects the wisdom of the Old Testament prophet Micah, who spoke from his very close relationship with God and urged that justice should always, always be tempered with kindness and humility. Parading the streets, waving placards, shouting slogans, taking a complex subject like our own history and thinking that you can solve its complexities and its rank injustices by graffitiing statues is a disservice to the cause of equality and it's an act of conceit, especially at a time when we're supposed to be protecting our vulnerable fellow citizens from coronavirus. It says my issue is more urgent than the lockdown rules. It actually says, in the case of many, 
I'm bored and I'm looking for an excuse, any excuse, to get out of the house and blow off. Do justice, says Micah. Do justice, but also love kindness and walk humbly with your God. St Paul, many centuries later, follows the same line. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, he writes, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Look to the interests of others. Be of the same mind as Christ Jesus. And what was Jesus' mind? What did Jesus do? Here's something for us all to remember in these days when so many passionate people are focusing on the injustices of slavery. Jesus, Paul writes, Jesus emptied himself and took on the form of a slave. Let's let that sink in. Jesus did not march around expressing righteous indignation. Jesus humbled himself and took on the form of a slave. And in doing this, he showed us the depth of God's love for us. And we've heard much talk these days as well about George Floyd becoming a martyr to the cause of black human rights. And in doing that, we seem to have forgotten that Jesus was the archetype of martyrdom. Jesus was the epitome of a martyr, as the one who died an unjust death but went on to become an inspiration to countless millions. For that reason, Paul could go on to say, Therefore God raised him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus took on the role of a slave so that he became my Lord and Saviour. He was the greatest martyr. And when someone says, George Floyd is a martyr, I say, get a grip. Of course he should not have died that way. Of course black lives matter. But if you call him a martyr, you don't know Jesus. You don't know God and what he did for us through giving us his son to offer us a new way of living. Yes, the last week or two have prompted many people to reassess their values, to examine the injustices of our world and to make a decision on how to react in their lives. And I say, be very careful of choosing your role models. It's so easy to get up, to get caught up in the latest big issue. And with months of pent up boredom behind us, boy, are people looking for issues to get involved in. But be careful. Don't just follow the crowd. Look instead to wisdom and inspiration that has stood the test of time. For me, such wisdom, such inspiration involves not just history and anthropology, but faith and theology. Looking to a higher wisdom and a more perfect example. Creating a fairer world, a better world, is not just about what common decency demands of us. It's not even just about what the cause of justice demands of us, but it's about what God demands of us. Micah summed that up about 2,700 years ago when he wrote, What does the Lord require of you? To do justice, but not only that, and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. May God help you to pursue justice and to do it with kindness and humility, knowing that God is by your side, whose son took on the nature of a slave for us. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forevermore. Amen. Our prayer now is the Scottish ecumenical prayer for today. Let us pray. Living God, you demonstrate your love for us through our Lord Jesus Christ. When we are powerless, stand with us in our weakness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Living God, you demonstrate your love for the world. 
through the self-giving of our Lord Jesus Christ. We remember those who are powerless in our world and stand with them in their weakness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Living God, as we stand with others, may we understand more fully the life we share in common. In understanding more fully, may we embrace the richness of the life you gift us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Living God, your Holy Spirit is the Lord and giver of life. May your love be poured into our hearts and our lives renewed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Living God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, Creator, Redeemer and Sustainer, embrace us and all creation in the love you demonstrate through our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In Jesus' name. Now, the Lord's Prayer, Our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever. Amen. Our closing hymn is What a Friend We Have in Jesus. <laughs> Now may the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, rest upon you and remain with you and all whom you love, this day and for evermore. Amen. So it's been 
good to share worship and Christian fellowship with you. And that's it for today. Have a look at our Blowart Hill website at www.blowarthillchurch.org and our St Columba website at www.highlandcathedral.org.uk. You can make a PayPal donation to our congregations from the Donate facility on either website if you want to. Please like and subscribe to this YouTube channel and remember our congregations in your prayers. Goodbye for now, stay safe and thank you for joining us.